So my name is Ali, but I'm better known for Alweezy. And if you haven't heard already, you're hearing it again. I'm your certified bad bitch. You already know the vibe. I said what I said, and I meant what I said. I'm the baddest bitch. You can't change my fucking mind. Hi besties! Hi besties! Hi besties! Oh my god! Ali C. Lopez, better known as Al Weezy, or even better known as Gorlack the Destroyer, is a 24-year-old TikTok influencer and self-proclaimed certified baddie. Her rise to internet fame came when she first appeared on the Whatever podcast, a popular dating podcast. Keep going. You can't divorce. I mean, that's not a real thing. Even I mean, though it might be like physically. You, you gotta endure. People are too. People but nowadays I'm gonna be honest. are just putties. A clip from her appearance on the show went viral after someone dubbed over her voice with that of Jabba the Hutt. He Ali is recognized for her unique appearance and for her extremely confident personality, which many have attributed to pure delusion. Ask everyone to rate themselves on a scale of one to ten. A five. Ten. Delusional. Babe, your man is probably in my fucking DMs and I could have had him as a body literally last week if I wanted to. I'm disgusted, bro. At a glance of her social media, the style of content she produces is no different than that of other TikTok and Instagram influencers. In her videos, she showcases her outfits and cosmetics and documents her day-to-day -day life for millions to see. Hey, this real quick. I just want to come on here because we're doing a quick vlog. So I'm going to wear this lace set with the garter and the jeans and my white slippers. I'm going to go have some fun. Ali has become the subject of much online scrutiny and mockery. But what differentiates her from other influencers of the same caliber? Does she deserve the constant ridicule, or is it unwarranted? Ali C. Lopez grew up in Arizona, USA, in a Mexican household. Despite struggling with her sense of gender identity at an early age, and being the victim of bullying in school, According to her, she had a good childhood. Honestly, I had the uh, best childhood. Like, For real? Um, yeah, like there were some struggles in middle school, whatever, but here in Tucson, like it's just a very home family oriented town and it's the best. Oh, yeah. Ali first began identifying as a woman during her high school years. Well, by what age did you start identifying as a woman? I have always known, like, I never knew the word for it, if I'm being honest, like growing up, I didn't know what trans was. Femininity for me is something that's always been 100% natural and not forced. I believe, I think it was like, um, like 14, 15, um, was when I discovered what trans was. And then I guess, like I said, as I got older, then I started experiencing makeup, I let my hair grow out, and I fully started living as a woman when I was at the age of like 18, 19, I wanna say. I mean, let's be f***ing realistic. Like, I'm a plus size trans girl. Like, I'm very much an easy target to get picked on. Her advocacy for trans rights, as well as spreading awareness for the safety and well-being of trans people, is an important part of her life. So basically, there was three trans women in Los Angeles um, who were attacked in public. Nothing was done about it. No one was there to defend them. Um, the three men who attack the three trans women, they do need to be caught and they do need to be put behind bars or at least given consequences for what they did. There's just not as much light shed on this situation right now and I don't, I wanna do the best that I can to bring awareness to this because as a trans woman, you know, we look, we look behind our shoulders 24 seven. Safety issues, like yeah. it doesn't matter what you are, like I feel like you have to disclose because this is how there's things like murders, violence, you know, X, Y, and Z. This is how trans girls like end up in sticky situations nine times out of 10 because they don't disclose. So like when, when, when did you like, did you start, like start TikTok? TikTok? Um, 
honestly, like if I can put an exact date on it, maybe like December 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was pretty, I think my start on TikTok was somewhat normal, I guess. Yeah. Um, I remember after I posted my first video, I think it was like something from like Megan Fox from like the movie Jennifer's Body. It was like a, an ad lib, uh, a sound from there. Yeah. And um, also shout out to Megan Fox. <laughs> Girl, I don't eat cooter, but I would eat yours. <laughs> Ali's first TikTok videos were those in which she would lip sync to music. She is also notorious for showing off her outfits of the night. Quick outfit of the day. Body is the fashion of the jeans, Target, the Birkins, Coach bag, and the sweaters. And the hair is fake. Besties, this is your reminder if you really need a confidence boost, throw on a face of makeup, your whoiest outfit, and go out. Like, are you kidding? Her outfits are often very revealing. And it is evident that she is unabashedly confident in her appearance and with her personality. I get a lot of for what I wear. Like, people are like, oh, you shouldn't wear that, it's for your body, blah, blah, blah. But when I'm in like, let's see, a blazer, a cute like little professional long sleeve, it's like, I, on top of feeling beautiful, I feel like almost powerful. For me, like, I don't wear this sh to like be, get it for attention. I do this because this is what makes me feel beautiful. This is what I'm comfortable with my skin. Yeah, maybe I'm not supposed to wear this, but guess what I do for me? Hey, best friends. Guys, it's exactly 2.30. I have to be at work at three and I just walked into my house from doing the walk of shame. So let's see how fast I can get ready for work and see if I can make it at work before three. Despite her status as a full-time bad bitch, she still works a regular job and is constantly late. Okay, besties, we're almost there. It's 2.54 and I'm getting in my car now and we're en route. Okay, besties, my butthole is sore, but we made it to work at exactly 3.01. Good morning, bad bitch. Look at the weather, what the fuck? But... I'm two hours late to work, but I'm still gonna have a good day. I hope you guys do too. Hi, besties! I know it's been a minute since I've done one of these, but get ready with me for work. Okay, besties, we're getting in the shower. Okay, besties, I just hopped out the shower, but I have a quick question. Am I the only one who brushes their teeth in the shower? I just wanna know. Hey, besties, I am currently en route to work. I am getting in my Uber. The weather is so nice. Have a good day, oh my God. I'm getting in the shower now, period. Okay, Bessie, it's 2.47 and we're out of the house. Okay, it's 2.59. And we're here on time. What the fuck? I'm just kidding, guys, it's 3.04. You guys know me so well. Look at Jenny's face. What, is he, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Her family and friends will often make appearances in her videos, and they all seem to be having an enjoyable time together. Hey, what are you wearing? Hey, besties! Hey, okay, besties. So we made our first stop. Cheers. First wine. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Okay. The second wine tasting, we just wrapped up lunch and look at the view. My view's prettier though, for sure. You oh, sound wow. like the big F. Bye, Good morning, besties. It's Thanksgiving morning. In her Thanksgiving vlog, Ali explains how each Thanksgiving, she goes to her friend's restaurant to help prepare and serve food to people in women's shelters and others in need. Turkey's done. Those are the two turkeys and a green bean casserole. We're getting stuff, babe. We're Period. Getting stuff. <laughs> and we're in charge of the stuffing. <laughs> Guys, 
Mimi's on the stuffed veggies. Period. Besties, we're getting ready to start serving. I already know, after the long turn is done, I'm gonna eat. Look at Kenny! Oh, yeah. So cute! Amy's on, on the mash duty, period. Monica's doing the green bean casserole. We love to see it, we love to see it. And Myra's doing the stuffing and biscuits, period. Hey bestie, this is the end of the vlog, but happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Hey besties, I just want to say a quick shout out to your dad for paying for my drink. Who has better lips near the fish? <laughs> There is always a humorous side to her videos, and it is clear she doesn't take herself too seriously. Oh my god, I was like 15 when this thing happened. I had never taken the city bus. I am a couple, I'm like two bus stops away from my high school. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I'm like, I kind of have, like, I'm, I'm still on the bus at this point, and I'm like, I kind of have to use the restroom, like, I have to take, shit, you know? So I'm like, okay. Like, I don't think, I don't want to really want to school. Like, that's embarrassing. Like, who the f takes a at school? So, I get off at this Del Taco. Mind you, it's f***ing pouring rain. I'm, like, running. I'm, like, like I have to. Okay. I finally get to the Del Taco. There is a sign next to the entrance of the door. Like, watch your step. And I f***ing slipped. Okay. And as soon as I f***ing land, okay. I think the biggest fucking shit of my life on myself. So I fucking slipped in front of Del Taco and I fucking took a shit on myself. Tell me, like, who the fuck does that kind of shit happen to? Like, does it happen to you guys? Or does this shit happen to me? Like, I just want to know. Even while receiving criticism based on her physical appearance, she responds in good humor. Honestly, of course, because one thing about me, I'm not going to gatekeep. Let's show you how I get this jawline. So I just hold my camera to the side, and then being like, you know, because if I hold it like this. <laughs> you know you cannot hide your fat body behind all that makeup that you're putting on. Damn, you're probably right. Oh, me? 7 a.m., babe. I'm taking the morning stroll. You know the vibes. Out here just working on his physique. And you're right. You're right. Baby, they already have that two for one ready for me at the drive through window. And what about it? What about it? And you know what? These freaking little comments, these little bickerings, they're not doing nothing but adding fuel to the fire, babe. And it just lets me know I'm not everybody's kind of bitch. And that's okay. Hey besties, hope everybody's having a good day. Because I didn't. One, I'm just pissed because people don't know how to act. And two, I'm even more mad because I have to f***ing drink my wine in a paper cup. Are you kidding? It is hard not to notice the incessant hate comments she receives on each of her videos, as well as videos about her. It is not uncommon for there to be more negativity the larger an audience becomes. It is also common for online personalities who receive a significant amount of hate to let it become their obsession. It is clear, however, that Ali refuses to let the negativity get her down. Online, everybody saw the memes. They, you know, you guys seen it? I seen it. They're funny as. <laughs> yeah. What do you? What, yeah. What? How do you do? I'm scrolling through my emails because I have to check to see like if I have trainings. Like I need to check on some other things. I see like this weird thing in like the subject line, like the subject for the email. Tell me why. Can click on it, and it's a five fucking paragraph essay from a man saying he would dommer me. Like, I might really be pissing people off. Like, maybe I should, guys. I'm gonna stop doing videos. I'm gonna chill. Nah, I'm not gonna fucking chill. Like. <laughs> Oh, 
Besties, I'm literally leaving the club early because men are fucking sh I'm in the drive through of a jack in a box on my way home and to go meet my feelings. Like, what the f Like, I'm literally a fucking 10. And this bastard is This clip of Ali leaving the club early and being upset over a man went viral. She later elaborated on this clip, explaining the details of what went on that night to cause her such emotional turmoil. So today we're going to be doing a motherfucking story time, and we're also going to be addressing this. So if you guys see my TikToks, literally a couple weeks ago, I posted a video of me basically crying in the back of an Uber in the fucking Jack in the Box driveway, crying, leaving the club. So rewind, um, basically it was my best friend's birthday and we were out at the club. Um, my side piece that I had been talking to for about two and a half years already had been previously married. So that night I had seen him at the bar with the girl who was supposedly his ex-wife. So I was pissed. I was so pissed. So I literally went up to her just to scare the f*** at him and see what he would do. And I literally said, oh my god, I love your Gucci bag. Where did you get it? Like, it's so cute. So yeah, I scared the f*** out of him. I don't talk to him anymore. I That's how the f***ing night ended. And I don't give a f*** about male validation because I am the baddest bitch, period. There was also the video which led to her appearance on the Whatever podcast. I stumbled on one of your videos that was like, you were in a taxi or something, or like- a Okay, I was <laughs> drunk off my ass. You it were... was the Uber Chronicles. Like, yeah, no, oh yeah, Uber Chronicles, That <laughs> yeah. I, that's how I found you. Um, so I got approached through a talent manager um, and they asked me to be on the show. So I did my research and I was like, oh shit, like this is what I'm walking into. Yeah. I mean, I already said yes and the check's already signed. So I really tried my best to brace myself yeah um just because like i mean we seem the kind of people that are on there you, you gotta endure people are too people oh, nowadays be are just pussies and we are live welcome to the whatever dating talk podcast episode 69 when the cameras began to roll and the stream started ali standing out from the rest of the guests on the podcast became the obvious target for the live chat and without her even yet speaking a word they wasted no time attacking her based on her appearance. Okay. Without further ado, we're going to have the guests introduce themselves. So I'm Allie, better known for Al Weezy. I'm 23 years old from Arizona, and I'm your certified bad bitch. Your, huh? The certified baddie. Talking to the mic. Yeah, talking to the mic, just so they can uh, hear you. Say, uh, your, say your occupation one more time for just, us. Just so they can. My occupation is a certified bad bitch. Similarly, it seemed as though the host, as well as the other male guests, found her presence on the program to be a joke in and of itself. Let's do a little fit check. Everybody, if everyone wants to do a little stand up, we'll do a little fit check, I guess. Okay. Mainly because like compared to when I was like 21 or 22. Chase, why are you laughing? Chase. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> well, Nothing. Sorry, he's laughing. Please I'm, continue. He's please laughing continue. at the chat. <laughs> please, 21, please, 22. Please continue. Yeah. How dare you, Chase? Please continue, as you were saying. Uh, as I'm getting older, it's like almost like when I cover up, it's like you feel more beautiful. But like I guess that's something that comes with age, and like I feel like a lot of younger girls. Yeah, are. like in high school, you're just gonna want to wear what every other girl yeah, wears, exactly. like a crop yeah. top and like some booty shorts or whatever. Yeah. Can but, I specifically ask this to you? We totally don't have to speak about it if you're uncomfortable, but what age did you start identifying as a woman? I started experimenting with my clothing, oh, etc. Sorry. Um, is your friend good? It sounds like you're making a lot of jokes there. <laughs> I don't know. The chat was saying some ridiculous shit, so they were, I think... Okay. Uh, Wait, 12 with girls I'm and 12 guys? No, like, Why combined. Not? Why not? Why would you answer it? Because that's my friend's business. But, but that's we, fair. We, that's could, fair. we could just make it public business. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sure you'd like that. But. I like seeing my body count because most people will see my body like count's like a lot higher. Are you are you hitting on me right now? No, I'm being sarcastic. Uh -huh. 
What's your body count? But I feel like when you're one of the dolls, you have to disclose when it comes to dating because this is how there's things like murders, violence, you know, X, Y, and Z. This is how trans girls like end up in sticky situations nine times out of ten because they don't disclose. Got to however, right. absolutely, X, X, y, X, Y, and Z, however, particularly will, X and Y. I Got will say that. <laughs> however, I will say, though, that being in the social scene, then that's on them. I respect your opinion, but you know what? It's not no worth one, my time. That's no personal responsibility that us conservatives love. Honestly, what's funny? Yeah, <laughs> yeah honestly, no, you guys are being really No, like you're being rude. Right I'm now. talking about a big situation. And you talk about side combers and sidebars, you're right. and you're laughing at her no, this whole time. We're it's not, really fucking no, like let's talk about it. Like we're gonna have to no, see yeah, like, really I rude. genuinely I'm not no, saying I, I'm not I, being, no, hey, listen, I'm not saying this to be confrontational, but like I've I'm all, all for people having opinions and, and fully respecting them. But I'm not gonna deal with the side laughing because it's not okay. It's really rude, it's not professional. Because I'm a hundred percent open to hearing Don't. your point of view on things. Throughout the over five hour long podcast, Ali, despite being well spoken and respectful the entire time was talked over and laughed at. Finally, at the end of the podcast, when Ali expressed how she respected their opinions and expected them to treat her with the same open-mindedness that she did for them, they apologised for giggling when she was speaking. There were a couple times where uh, me and Chase were kind of giggling a little bit. Uh, I actually want to apologise for that. That wasn't cool, especially when I you're speaking. For that too. There yeah, were and some. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I have a very <laughs> dark sense of humor. Like I can take a lot of shit, but if we're having a serious conversation, like 100, avoid the hate comments because I know they can be funny. As I laugh at my own hate comments too. Let's be real. But like when we're having a, a certain debate, like there's a time and place for. Shit, and if we're talking about something, like don't let that be a distraction. Yeah. yeah. They, I feel like they really wanted me to be like those freaking characters you see on Jerry Springer, and like that's just not my personality. <laughs> Um, but I feel like not necessarily the host because Brian was cool. Like, yeah. Me and Brian, like, I, I had no bad blood at all. Um, but um, just the other hosts that were on there, like the co-host, he left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. But it was just very much like I felt like I was being talked down to the whole time. Um, but like even for example, example like Deborah who was on there, she was. I'm gonna be honest, she's a really nice girl. Yeah. Um. But, like, what I don't appreciate about it, and, like, we, we chopped it up after the show, and, like, she seemed really, really nice. Um, but, like, I don't appreciate, like, the memes being posted like, yeah. on the story. Wait, like, they, they made their own memes, or they, like, remade memes? I don't know if memes. they made their own memes yeah. or what it was, but it was, like, there was, like, memes being posted on her story. Oh, on her own story. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. on her own story. Yeah. Like, and I get it to post clips, like, of your discussions, because, I mean, you're promoting the podcast. Yeah. But to post, like, kind of memes, like, of you, like, kind of, like, low-key throwing shade. Yeah. Like, homegirl like at the end of the day aren't you a girl's girl yeah like trans or not like you're supposed to be a girl's girl like yeah for sure you're being a bully after her explosion in popularity from her appearance on the whatever podcast she was asked by youtuber aiden ross to join a discord call which was being streamed she was paid $2,500 to appear on his live stream, though it took some haggling. Are you definitely? Could you negotiate like 2000 Maybe 25 Okay, I have an offer you cannot pass down. $2,000 and a Big Mac. It's a joke. On God, I will pay you, okay? Just wait one second. I'm out of in here. Sneeko, let's see here real quick. Let me ask Sneeko real quick. Sneeko, real quick. Yep. This is my friend, uh, Allie, your name's right? Yeah, hey Nico, how are you? No, Sneeko, Sneeko. So, what do, you, what do you do exactly? You're on that podcast. What did you talk about that was so controversial? But if I'm being honest, I think it's just people are so in shock to see someone like me just like- Confident. Have a level of confidence that I do yeah. have. The you're, you're- and stuff like that. Everybody just has- like, Oh, wait, see, so are you trans? You're trans? Yes, I'm trans. Okay. Um, since I was little, if I'm being 100% honest. Oh, okay. Um, but it's something that's never, I never could put a word to it. And um, 
I finally figured out like what it was. Delusion. You know, had a label no, Sneeko, no, hold on, bro. Let's just not try to put anyone down, okay? Let's just try to talk. No, no, no. She, she's saying she couldn't, she couldn't put a word to it. I think the word is mental illness. Uh, not, oh, no. I mean, that's your opinion, you know? And I'm not going to sit here and argue with you to change that. If that's something that you believe, like, that's yeah, on you. Yeah, you have the but masculine the day, confidence, like, so you, you, don't, can, you don't care. I just, um, hey, Ali, I'm sorry. I'll be, I'll be your, what are your pronouns? Uh, she, her. Thank you. Oh, or, or there's other... Well, Aiden, Adam, what do you think the, the pronouns for these people were? I think it was, it wasn't no, kill uh, them. No, no. In my head, I've always known I was a woman. Delusional. Get all over. Hold on, my friend wants to join. Neon, um, put your camera on. Yeah, Hold on, Neon, we're having a little podcast talk, okay? Dude, you are genuinely one of the ugliest people I've ever looked at. So Throughout the 40 minute stream, Ali was faced with a barrage of insults nearly every time she spoke. It was clear Aiden had ulterior motives in bringing Ali on the livestream. The men continuously attempted to discredit her identity and attacked her on her physical appearance. It was obvious she was brought on to be made a mockery of. Despite the incessant stream of insults, she remained respectful. Because I want to have the same level of respect for everyone that I would expect for someone to have respect for me. I genuinely hope someone comes to your house and in the f***ing head you f***ing hippo you f***ing Oh no. Fuck this fat bitch. How the f*** you wake up like that? How do you not f*** up? Please tell me. Bro, I'm not. I'm not gonna just f*** up. You're fat. You're a f***ing. Somebody, somebody, you bitch. Somebody, somebody, somebody. You, you, you. I feel like James Franco on the the interview, that's honestly, that's right? Literally one of my favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally feel like Franco on the interview right now, uh, interviewing you. You're like the local legend here. Uh, thank you. I really it's, appreciate it. So hot. On May the nineteenth, two thousand and twenty-three, Ali made her most recent podcast appearance on the first episode of the Vision Podcast, hosted by Harry Con Cannon. Um, it's my camera, right? Yeah. Cool. So my name is Ali, but I'm better known for Al Weezy. And if you haven't heard already, you're hearing it again. I'm your certified bad b You already know the vibes. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but like, I got like very good vibes from you. So Thank you. Like, Appreciate when, it. Right after you, when I, when I seen your DM, I was like, okay, like, cool. yeah, it's dope. he goes to U of A, like, yeah. he has a little podcast. Like, I'm with the sh like Love uh, it. Like, like, what would you say to Andrew Tate if he was watching this right now? Um... Buy me a brick in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I take that back. Pay for my BBL. Oh, pay for <laughs> Andrew Tate. Fly you... me out to Colombia or to Culiacan and have them like rearrange my body. Because I love my body, but I want a fatter ass than what I already have right now. Fans. Like, you ever thought about doing an OnlyFans or no? Can I be honest? Yeah. I was actually thinking about dropping one on my birthday. Oh, shit. Yeah, I don't, I still, honestly, like the only reason why I didn't was because I just had a lot going on. Yeah. Um, like I said, I just have, I'm working on a lot of stuff right yeah. now. Sure, but I think if I were to drop one, my content wouldn't be anything like crazy. Maybe I'll like flash a nipple here and there. I mean, I do it all the time <laughs> in the club anyways. Oh, if you ever good. see me in public and my titties out, like don't be scared to tap me on the shoulder. Ali opened up about her online perception and how she's been treated since she first clocked in as a full-time baddie. Yeah. The Peter Griffin and Selena Gomez hybrid. I was like, <laughs> oh, my how the do you come up with this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, they'd be on Reddit, like, scrolling yeah, through. I don't even know how the f they come up with that. I'm like, how the f do you have the time to come up with this shit? Because this is comedy gold, bro. Uh, this on. is not me condoning my bullying. You guys, I'm not saying it's okay for you guys to bully me, guys. Yeah. But, but no, she doesn't but care. Just know I don't give a f if you do. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. But to all of you haters, though, who actually be taking it seriously, like, quit reporting my TikTok account. Oh, your account's been reported? Oh, my. Like, honestly, I thought I lost my TikTok. No way. Yeah, they completely, like, deleted my profile oh how'd you get it back i appealed it and they gave it back to me oh okay yeah right. they did. as far as like being recognized and stuff like that i think it's just it, it's just a reminder for me that like i'm i'm going i'm doing something with i'm doing something with my platform and i'm pushing things in the right direction yeah it was refreshing to see an interview in which ali's personality was on full display she appeared very comfortable and open on camera see like okay so like for example oh my god i probably just I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. Unlike the previous podcasts she had participated in, she was not insulted or talked over. And finally, we got to understand more of what it meant to be a certified baddie. 
Um, but I think overall, just to be like a certified bad bitch, just yeah. confidence. Yeah. Like you can literally like, how do I say this? Like, I don't even feel like it's about how you look. It's yeah. just the energy you exude. Cause like, let's be real. Like I'm ideally speaking, if we're speaking superficially, yeah. like I'm probably not in 10. Like, and I recognize that, oh, you gotta but, say. but my level of confidence yeah. is a f 10. So yeah. It's literally like overall, it's just the confidence you exude. It's the energy you exude. It's the, yeah. It's everything. But yeah. yeah, it might sound delusional or whatever. But like, like I said, looks are just something that are something superficial and it's stupid. But like, I don't know. I feel like it's all about the energy you exude, yeah. and that's what makes a bad body. The world of Ali C. Lopez is one filled with happiness humour and acceptance. She is confident in her identity and her sense of self-worth, regardless of the jokes and the insults that she has faced during her lifetime. Ali is not an evil person, despite how people have tried to demonise and dehumanise her in front of millions. She is a genuinely good person and is respectful even to those who despise her. The only thing that sets her apart from others is her appearance and her unabashed confidence in her personality. The online mockery will likely always remain, but she will never let it affect how she lives her life. No matter what anybody says, she will always be a certified bad b If you haven't heard already, you're hearing it again. I'm your certified bad b You already know the vibe. I'm the baddest bitch. You can't change my fucking mind. I never taken the city bus, and I'm finally about to get to school. I am a couple. I'm like two bus stops away from my high school. Okay, and the weather this day it was like the beginning, like the ending of monsoon season. It was fucking raining. Okay, I'm like I have to use the restroom. So I'm like, like, I'm like running. Okay, so mind you, the bus stops like across the street. So I still have to like cross the street to get to this fucking restaurant. I'm like running. So I'm like, like, I have to, okay. I'm running and I'm running and I'm running. And there is a sign next to the entrance of the door. Like watch your step. And I can slip, okay. And as soon as I can land, okay, I have like this like vision of like clarity. I think the biggest sh of my life on myself. So I can slipped in front of Del Taco and I can took it on myself because I had to use the restroom. Does it happen to you guys? Does this happen to me? Like, I just want to know. 